Hi, this is Helen back here again, interviewing another amazing woman in my life. Um, I wanted to share Kathy with you because, um, and if, if you already know Kathy, of course you know how fabulous she is and how she really makes people feel better. Let's be honest, life can be a little bit um, of a challenge at times. And um, Kathy is one of those people who just spending time with her, you end up feeling just like things are going to be fine. Things are going to be all right, right? And um, I really wanted to talk to Kathy today about abundance. She has a, you know, a lot of people talk about getting into flow and being in abundance, etc. Kathy has a very different um, experience of it and how, how to do it. And she has a lot of personal experience in it. So I think she'd definitely be the right person to teach you about it. Um, so let's just get started. First of all, hello, Kathy. Hi, Helen. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, hi. So fantastic. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Helen Elizabeth Evans, as you can see from the actual um, little notification you'll have above you. Um, so uh, what did I want to share? Um, first of all, Kathy, I wanted to ask you, um, we were talking um, um, earlier about, you know, your experiences with, you know, how uh, tough life could actually be, how uh, difficult things can actually be for you. And I um, and you had a really lovely story to share about finding your house. And, I, and I'd love to know, you know, first of all, how you felt before you kind of jumped into the in, into the chasm of, of, of that situation. Would you share that with us? Sure. And um, so I was at a point where I, I has had a split in my relationship. We were still friends but and living in the same space, but it was still quite draining and I wasn't able to get on and do what I wanted to do in my business and um you know it, it's like being stuck in quite an old situation I suppose and um I we carried on living together for about six months and then I just had this feeling now is the time to go and um it was just a real intuitive hit that I had to hand my notice in and get that ball rolling and I didn't know uh, where I was going to go I'd actually I was in a transition between doing graphic design work and much more of the um, sort of consciousness work that I do and um, and the coaching and so I got rid of all my design clients and so I'd cut down my income and I had only been Kind of running my business for a year or two, so I didn't have all the record, the tax records, in order to, you know, like when you when you rent a new place, you have to give so many documents to show your income flow and all that sort of thing. So I didn't have any of that. So it was like a just a leap into the void when I actually handed my notice in. Uh, and but I had a vision board done, and I I was focusing on how it would feel and all of the things that I wanted every day for that couple of months and I, I one of the things that I wanted it to be easy and I knew what the amount was I wanted to pay and I had an area and um and so I found this place it was the first place I looked at this flat it was beautiful everything fitted on the everything I'd written on my vision board came you know fitted that thing uh, so I gave my money my deposit and then it was like okay you know show me how I'm going to get the payment out of this because I can't do this <laughs> based on my um, uh, my records and everything and um, after a few weeks of oh my god how is this going to work out and it was just getting tighter and tighter and tighter and I was quite frequently sort of um, stressing out and I was there sitting crying my eyes out one day just thinking god what have i done and i was like show me a sign that this is going to, everything's going to be okay and um about two hours later i got a pass a parcel through the post and this book was in it can you see that oh uh, yeah move, move it over but it says everything is going to be okay did you even know that that you had ordered that i didn't order it oh. it was a <laughs> it was a present from a friend uh, a couple of weeks early for my birthday. So it was just, oh no, I just saw it and I burst into tears thinking, oh my God, some, something's watching out for me. And it just gave me that sense of relief and, oh, okay, so there is something a lot bigger going on here. I am meant to be um, doing this leap of faith to get my house and I've 
I'm in my house four years on and it's still my sanctuary. I love it. <laughs> oh my God. You know, that is an amazing story. I mean, I think that there's probably a, a number of people listening who might be feeling a bit stuck or, you know, it might be in a situation like you were with your boyfriend at the time, uh, having to move out of a place but not actually being in, in, in a financial position to actually do so. It's almost like we need that safety net, right? And it's, it's, you have this ability to take to to take leaps of faith, which is really in many ways what this is all about. Is how can we take leaps of faith, knowing that we will be supported, right? That's yeah, and it's sometimes. Story. Yeah, but and some I do do these leaps of faith. It's something I've done a, a lot, and I also have to say it doesn't always appear to work out sometimes as well <laughs> when you do it. <laughs> Uh, I'm in the middle of one at the moment. It's like, oh my god, when is this? When are we going to be through this? You know, and it's um. But when I look at all of the positives that are happening as I'm going through it, there's so many amazing things that are happening in my business. Even though I've taken a, a very big leap of faith, it's like um. When you feel a change that's happening, that you're you're feeling a call to mo to make a, a change in your business or in your life. And the fears all kick in or it's uh, you get a sense of, oh, I can't do that because or, you know, all the, the small self kind of head talk kicks in. If you can ignore that and, and do it regardless, get louder. It seems like crap from everywhere comes to you. You know, it's like you're attracting all the opposite of what you set out to do. And that's normal. And also and you'll struggle through it and it will feel really uncomfortable. but from my experience of all these other leaps of faith I've done, the struggle is really important because it is actually making you a lot stronger mm -hmm. and it usually works out. I mean, it, it does work out, not that it usually works out. It doesn't necessarily work out how you expect it to, but there's always some real germ at the end of it. Some, the, and the harder the struggle, usually the bigger the, the reward at the end. So, oh, really? For having gone through? I mean, I think a lot of people could probably resonate with it. You know, sometimes we, I'm sure you feel as if you're going in the right direction, but you're kind of thinking things aren't, aren't working 100% right. Uh, yeah. That's when you take this leap of faith. Uh, and sometimes when it doesn't feel like, you know, you, you kind of imagine everything in the way that you're supposed to with the law of attraction, but it doesn't seem to be really working out for you. Um, I know... Um, uh, you know, you have quite a few stories of having done that. Um, but because it's a short interview and, and definitely people should connect with Kathy and find out about those stories because she has fabulous stories around that. But one of the things I think a lot of people are very concerned about is that they always wonder, am I fully connecting with my highest, highest self and my inner guidance? Am I, you know, is that really my, um, how can I do that better? Uh, do you have one tip for people on, on doing that? Do finding some kind of meditation that, guides you to get out of your head and into your body or uh, and it doesn't have to be silent meditation it could be actually dancing um, it's anything that gets space in your head you want to be able to um, so first of all it's about getting out of the mind because that's what cuts you off and get into your heart because that's what connects you to to your higher self to your intuition to that inner guidance um, and it's about really exploring your desires what what feels fun what feels light what makes you feel good and it's about following those because that it's like we we have these seeds dropped into our hearts of like seeds of desire they're like a little trail that pull us towards our potential that we're born for and so it's it's about following your joy and that will lead you there and sometimes you what feels joyful and exciting um, also is a bit scary. But if it feels a bit spongy when you're kind of going towards the fear, that's a good sign. If it feels like a wall, it will usually feel heavy and solid and just meh, you know, it's a bit flat, mm. a bit meh. Uh, and that's usually a block. So you want to follow what's really, that makes you feel alive and what's really joyful. Absolutely. And by the way, if you're, if you're online, feel free to ask questions or make comments. Um, uh, we'd love to uh, hear what you think. And so what did I want to ask you? I mean, you know, that's some of the challenges that we have. And, I, and, and you know, and, and it is possible. You basically taught on so many levels of how it is possible to really hear your inner guidance and to actually follow it and to listen to it. And I know um, that is one of the challenges of a lot of 
people out there. So I'm kind of a little bit excited about a workshop that you're doing soon, which I think would really help. And it's not a, um, you know, it's not a, a workshop that is about, um, uh, it's very affordable from what I can see for a one day workshop. It's exceptionally affordable. Um, I think it's a little bit too much good value actually. <laughs> but um, it, it, so don't worry about that aspect of it. Uh, the key thing is really what are people going to get out of this workshop you're going to do? What's it about? So it's about opening up your capacity to receive more. Um, and a little bit um, like, like we sort of touched on before, if law of attraction isn't working, there's a reason for that. And it's because you're blocking your receiving. So mm -hmm. it's about, first of all, learning how you're blocking your abundance from coming into your life. Um, and then it's about getting very clear about your visions and connecting into your heart. Because a lot of people don't, they, they're even cut off or from from their hearts or from what the heart wants because they've maybe have stories in their heads that say, oh, I can't, I can't even begin to imagine what's possible for me. Or, you know, they don't give themselves permission to dream. Um, other people have great visions and but they get they block themselves from going for it or you know there's, there's so many ways that we stop ourselves from reaching that flow of abundance that's a, a natural flow it's what we're meant to be doing it's 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 all there for us and we just block it and so it's about learning how that happens and then um I'm going to be teaching some tools to help people clear those blocks out of the way. Oh, I like that. So I like, oh yeah, I like that. So actually, so you're giving people strategies effectively, um, yeah. right? As to um, how they can, they can sort of get rid of their self-sabotage or not get rid of it, but work with it so that they, yeah. so that they can attract more of what they want into it. So if, um, if, there's, if, if you're watching and um, you have any questions, don't forget to bring one in. Oh, hang on a second. Somebody has – oh, Inga says, hello, ladies. Oh, let's um, – I have to first, just to make sure your face doesn't get covered by the comments. Um, let's show the comment. Is this showing? Oh, no, it's not. Did this yeah, show up? It did. Oh, there you go. Oh, you see I'm learning. <laughs> Slowly but sure. Inga's saying hello. Um, so what um, sort of questions um, do we think that people who might attend, um, who might be interested in attending the workshop um, might have about it? Oh, you know, Kathy, the venue. Tell us, I mean, I saw the photographs of the venue. That, I mean, that, I don't know about you, and I'm sure you do too, but I find that if I'm working in a good, in, uh, in a venue that has nice, a nice vibe, let's use the word vibe, shall we? Um, it really helps to, um, uh, it just really helps me kind of get into connection with myself. But it, I don't get disturbed because if I'm in an environment where it's just ugly or, you know, kind of not quite right, I find that there's an, there's an, there's an edge that I just – of that is bothered. Does that make sense? And I, I don't fully receive from the workshop. So let's talk about your venue because let's be honest, your venue is fab. I know. So um, I only discovered this quite recently. I went to have a look at it, and it's just magical. It's um, it's called Green Acres, and it's just on the edge of the Chilterns. So one of the things that I'm really passionate about, and another thing that sort of really helps people connect with their higher self, is getting into nature. And so this is a little venue called. Um, so it's just on the edge of the Chilterns, outside of Beaconsfield, and it's just off the A40. About uh 25 miles outside of london so it's, it's quite um close by um to get there from the city center um and yes it's just beautiful beautiful it's like a it's almost like a temple the the meeting space it feels like and then it's I just some yeah i mean if you want to see, uh, let me just say Oh, Inga's also going, she agrees that the, the venue is important. Right. So I'm going to see if I can um, just type in um, the, if you want to go, go and see what the venue looks like, I'm just going to give you a link. She's got, this is the page, and you can just scroll down, uh, the page about the workshop, um, and you can just scroll down. Am I, am I not showing a second? Am I showing it properly? Let me see if I'm doing so. There we go. Fantastic. Um, and, you know, if you just scroll down, you'll see it with this beautiful wood and the light, and it's in a sort of like a, a, a sort of countryish almost environment. Would that be right, Kathy? 
really, really yeah. like that. Just a, what a fabulous designer. I did in my in my youth want to be an architect, so I particularly am passionate about um, a building. So that alone will make it so much easier to kind of connect with yourself that you're in a great environment, right? Yeah, it's really peaceful and quiet. Okay, cool. so um, what else? Uh, so and and the day starts at nine thirty, right? Nine thirty. Um, to 3.30 and uh, they need to bring their own lunch. Yeah, it's because it's quite remote. There's no cafes or restaurants or anything around. So you need to okay. have lunch. And so what about light refreshments? You said light refreshments are going to be provided. What what sort of light refreshments will you give? So I'll, I'll bring nibbles and things and tea and coffee's all supplied. All supplied, <laughs> <laughs> including de decaf or not? Um, <laughs> you know, just for those who are interested. <laughs> They probably have herbal teas, right? Herbal teas, coffees, yeah, builders. <laughs> builders tea too. Oh yeah, let's not forget the builders tea. Even the enlightened among us love love builders tea. So, um, and oh, the other thing that I think about this, which is a ma magical thing to to really talk about, and, and something I'm very passionate about, is the idea that we need to um, actually bring more fun into our lives. And I love the fact that you said that this this is a, going to be a a fun day so even though you're going to be doing something really practical and useful it's actually going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be about connecting with other people who are like-minded um etc any anybody have any comments i know notice that there's a there's quite a number of people who've joined us to talk about about um this please do watch the replay because kathy shared some real gems earlier on um as well that you may have missed if you've only just joined us um around actually um, you know, connecting with your abundance, getting into free flow, connecting with your higher self and, and you know, connecting with your inner guidance. But she's going to do a lot more of that um, at this work, workshop that she's doing, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, what else did you say? Fun is, really, fun is really important because when, you, when you're in fun and you're in, you're in a, um, that's a really high vibration and play because being in a, an energy of play is a, being in a, an energy of giving permission for anything to come into that space. It's not, it's, um, it, it allows possibility. So we're going to, it's going to be very playful. Um, and when you're, so I'm going to be getting people to connect with their vision and get really excited about what's there for them and share that with partners or share that with other people who are seeing them in their, in their sense of possibility of, of seeing totally that their vision can pan out and when you have that mirror back it makes you feel this is totally possible because it's being witnessed and um it really brings the energy up in in the whole group and people leave feeling absolutely buzzing and like they go away knowing it's possible and they go away with some of the first steps uh in place that they know what to take if that makes sense was that bad english <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter, does it? As long as we get the message. <laughs> um, and also, you know, I really like this that you said you're going to show people how easy it is to connect with their true selves. Um, and, and I really like the fact that you talked about actually us inhabiting a place of expansiveness. Can you kind of get a little bit more into that? What, is, what do you mean by a place of expansiveness? You kind of hinted at it already with some of what you've said, I know. So when, you, when you're connecting with your higher self, um, so you, you know, like everything is energy, essentially that links everything. It's, the, it's known also by so many different uh, names, but the field of consciousness. It's that energy that links everything that exists. And when you get uh, go through a meditation, and you you can connect to your heart, and you can connect through that in a sort of feeling experiential way, and you just expand your awareness and limitless energy and you feel it you feel this connection and there's such power and possibility there because you're tuning into like universal creative energy just by being in that space and because that's when you're you're not like normally you're in your head and you're thinking and um it's quite limited but when you're in that really expansive place your head's empty and much more um you get like insights drop into your awareness of, of how to move through blocks or what might be blocking you. And you look at blocks from a different perspective rather than within it. You see it from a, a new place. So you can see around it and what's, you know, how it's being um, held in place. And then you can release it. 
So it's, yeah. it's a fun place to, to be in and it just makes you feel good, uh, really good. Makes you feel light, makes you feel happy. It's joy when you're in that place. It's love. Actually, I've, I've got a story which I think for people might, 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 might sort of see what, 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 why that is important from my story. Um, I remember going into business with a friend of mine <clears throat> way back then. And at the time, the decision to go into business with her, I was making from a place where I was a diminished version of myself. You know, where I was not playing, I was not seeing myself as the fully expanded, limitless self that you, that you sort of often talk about. I was seeing myself as a person with a very limited possibilities. Uh, my self-worth was quite low at the time. And as a result, the decision to go into business with her, as my confidence started to grow and I started to become more myself again, the better version of myself, suddenly the business wasn't working anymore because we were both, there was a power struggle. Um, uh, going on, which wasn't appropriate at all. Um, so sometimes if we make it, it's very hard when we're feeling bad about ourselves or whatever to make the right decisions for ourselves. Whereas by using your tools and getting yourself, even though you may be struggling a bit with your self-worth, et cetera, but getting your tools to, um, that you, you supply people with to get them into that space where you can actually say, okay, I need to make a choice, but let me get into that vibe. I need to get into that higher, best version of myself vibe before I decide. Because you get an inner knowing when you're in that space as to what the right decision is for you. Would that be yeah. accurate? Have I interpreted that correctly? Yeah, definitely. And it's kind of a bit like when you go away on holiday where you're not worrying about work and you're going away to just have a break, that's when a lot of your great ideas come in. Yes, so it's, true. it's that kind of thing. You know? It's about having fun, uh, getting out of your head. In a good way. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's that's a yeah, that's a really good point, and I'm, I could easily sidetrack on that. That, uh, and I'm going to stop myself because I have lot, a lot to add. So, tell tell us how much does this um, uh, day cost? Because I did say that it was exception. I, I thought it was incredibly good value for for you know a full day. It's ninety seven pounds for the day. Wow. I mean, seriously, under ten, under a hundred pounds. I mean, these days people charge so much more than that, and I think to actually. Um, it's like taking a holiday for the day, right? It, it's like you're going to go for mm. a break. So if you've been having a bit of a challenge with things, etc. Now tell us, you've got two days that you'll be running this workshop. Uh, tell us about those. So the first one is coming up on uh, Saturday, the 1st of July. And the, the next one is, is def it's probably going to be the 23rd of September, and I need to confirm the date, but, and I'll be sharing about that on um probably on monday i'll have that date confirmed but 23rd of september i know it's okay. <laughs> this is the workshop link for people if they want to go and have a look, look at it and do either of these workshops with kathy but kathy one thing that we haven't really talked about is i've sort of made a bit of an assumption that a lot of the people listening um actually know you already but just for anybody who's stuck with this and wants to know a little bit more about kathy and you know why she's able to teach this kind of work um, I think it would be really good for you to share a little bit of background information with people, which explains to them why you're passionate about this and why you're the person that they might want to actually come and learn from. Sure. So um, I guess we were all following, uh, those of us who are like following our uh, a calling that you get in your heart, um, I've, I've always done that uh, since I was at university, really, and I, I took off to go traveling and I started following this inner guidance because at the beginning, it's, um, I was on my way to Japan to teach English. And as I was on the plane, I got this real strong intuitive message. It was like a voice in my head that said, don't worry, but your backpack didn't make it on the plane and everything's going to be OK. <laughs> and uh, so when I got to the airport and it wasn't there and I just knew it wouldn't be, um, I gave my details about where I was staying. And I carried on my journey. And it, it would have been a terrible journey if I'd had that thing because it was so big. Um, and so anyway, I got to my destination two days later. The backpack turned up two hours after me. And oh, wow. uh, you know, it all was like, you know, it, I, I was just, OK, what was that? What was going on? And I felt it was something to do with the intuition, taking the leaps of faith that I'd done to go there. And I just wanted to learn more about it. So it put me on a path of um, spirituality, consciousness. I got really into yoga. I asked a million and one questions to my spiritual teacher. I went to India for several months. 
Um, and I've traveled all the around the world, and usually buying one-way tickets because I knew I had to get to a certain place. And then I would ask, do I need to go here today? Do I turn left, turn right? You know, just playing with the intuition. And eventually it led me to, to New Zealand. I'd met a spiritual teacher in Mexico who invited me to help him build a, a consciousness center. And I ended up running that for five or six years, running, um, teaching people how to connect with their inner guidance and um, doing energy work, sharing different tools that will help them transform their lives to be uh, more in alignment with who they're born to be. And uh, oh. that was 10 years ago, I think I've been back in this country. So um, since then I've sort of been through a journey of doing going back to normal normal work doing graphic design and so and then I set up a business so I've been through the business journey as well I've been through all the ups and downs I know what it's like being a business owner um, and an entrepreneur and it, this is about bringing all of all of your skills across your whole life everything's leading you towards something that you're meant to be here in the world to do and so that help people see that bigger picture of who they are and step into the greatness of who they're born to be. Wow, and Inga has, has, has got the nail on the head that, you know, it's very brave of you, Kathy. <laughs> to just kind of take those leaps of faith. I'm taking a one-way ticket and I'll find the money on the other side to take the next step, right? The rest of us kind of want things to be a little more secure. Um, yeah. But learning to let go and trust is massive. And, um, you know, a lot of the business books say today the one thing that is actually that people want more than anything else is is trust. But what people will buy with, is somebody that how can not only that they can trust, but actually can teach them how to trust themselves. And really, yeah. this is what you're going to be doing for people, isn't it? Yeah, well, it, it'll be an introduction to it. It's about activating that sense of trust to start with, because when you are in it's like trusting yourself and trusting who you that that higher self part of you. Uh, it all leads you to your abundance, because abundance is is naturally there for us, and we just have to get out of our own ways. But if and if we do, that's what will come to us, because that's what we're we're kind of designed to receive abundance. It's just we have so many so many resistances to it. So it's about self. -trust. And Maybe talk a little bit about abundance because a lot of people have a lot of different um, uh, interpretations, shall we say, of the word abundance. And I know your viewpoint is slightly different. I mean, yes, you talked about the fact that for a lot of people, abundance might mean, you know, money uh, or material things. Um, that's um, Those should really be side effects, right, <laughs> of, yeah. of true abundance. Um, yeah. So talk, talk to us about abundance from, from your perspective. So... For me, it's about being who you're here to be. When you own that and you go for it and you're, you know, with, with a, an open heart, you're in your joy and you're doing the work or you're moving towards the work that you're here to do. And it's a journey. But when you commit to that it's and you take those blocks out of the way of being who you're here to be, the money and the, the, money and the opportunities and the connections and the new friendships and the love and everything else comes in and the healing the like the physical healing that's another side effect of when you're getting into alignment with who you're here to be so it's it's about um feeling that you're here and supported and that you're here for something bigger i think and the sense of fulfillment really of um, being on that journey I think one of the words that I love that you used uh, <clears throat> that talked about abundance before was, <clears throat> excuse me, was that sense of unlimited possibility and magic. So in yeah. many ways, it's, it's uh, what you're talking about is a little bit like belief, mm -hmm. you know, belief that abundance is possible and that it's due to you and that you will have everything you need. Yeah. There's no need to feel fear. And it's important to work on those beliefs that are blocked first, because once you can believe that you are unlimited, then you are opening the door for more magic to come in. Yeah, I, I look, I, I know there's a number of people actually watching at the moment. If you've got questions or you've got any comments, please put them in. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so because I don't want to cut the interview short, I'm ha happy to go on if you'd like to know more. Um, so just let us know what you'd like to know about it and, and let's ask Kathy. 
Um, anything you'd like to learn from her, any challenges that you're having at the moment, come on, just bring them on, share them, and uh, let's talk about them and see what Kathy has to share. Um, what else did I want to ask you about um, as well? Um, we talked very much about the unlimited self. You, you refer to it as an unlimited self. Tell us in, in, in other people's words or in my what, words that maybe so, if somebody didn't know what unlimited self meant, what does that actually mean? So when, before when I was talking about energy being the, the energy is what underlies everything in creation. And when you, you know, science knows that um, everything is made of the same stuff. Yeah. So at the smallest, smallest level, there's just um, like tiny, tiny particles. And the thing that differentiates, say, um, the table that you're sitting at with, with your nose is the in organizational intelligence of the forces that are holding those two separate things together uh, you know separately does that make sense it so does to me because i'm more sciencey um but for those who aren't sciencey <laughs> um so for instance you know the table is more solid than perhaps the nose is and the space in between is the least solid would that be fair no, no, no just the Everything is made of the same matter at the smallest level, but the, the, there's a difference between um, there's something organizing those atoms into your nose and those atoms into the table. It's just a matter of these this intelligence that's made those definitions of forms. Okay. Yeah. But ultimately, everything is energy. So this force, this intelligence, this is. Um, like the intelligence of the universe and this is and it runs through you it runs through everything else and it, it it is operating at this level of energy and so when you play from that place from that level from that awareness you can move energy you can play with it this is the magic this is how like shaman and um you know um magicians manifest stuff it's it's to do with belief and i certainly can't manifest things out of thin air into my hands like certain you know spiritual gurus that are quite famous do but it, it is about playing with energy and using you the intention of your mind because it's all an extension of you and so I know that you were saying like a lot of people don't understand the concept of unlimited self and it's um it, I it's so, now. yeah I now that you've explained it okay it takes some wrapping your head around but that's where you start to get your um shift your beliefs about what's possible because when you realize oh everything's energy there's no blocks because you're not just seeing oh this is a a solid object that i can't manipulate or change in any way or this is what's happening in my life it's solid i can't i'm not powerful enough to make any difference around it but when you realize you are powerful and that isn't how things are that no it's just how it appears and you ask how can this be different how can i make it different uh what would it take to make it different you're suddenly opening up lots of very powerful questions to this field of consciousness that then starts to shift things because it responds to who you're being and this is where law of attraction does work so it's about when you get really clear and passionate about what's in your heart and you're putting that out there See, if it's aligned with who you're here to be there'll be a lot of um energy and like emotion connected and it sends these ripples out into this field and it's the, those ripples that then bring back the matching vibrational um equivalent in the physical to what you're sending out does that make sense that's what shifts yes, that's yes what shifts. absolutely so uh, could, could you give for, the, for those people i mean i think if you sat through this you kind of understand that um, or you're getting your head around this, but can we take it into like a, a practical example? Do you have a story from a, a, a client um, that you could talk about um, or that you could share? So um, a client a few weeks ago, um, she's an actress. Um, and as you know, like the, the usual thing that people think about being an actor is it's really hard to find work because there's so many, so many talented people that you're in competition with. And not only that, but you, you not only have to be brilliantly and brilliantly talented, but 
the the casting person has to want to want someone just like you because yeah. they've got someone in their mind. So it's really, you know, it's a hard gig to get into. So my client, she was in a, a role and she was coming to the end of it. So she was starting to panic because she was thinking, oh, my God, I could be able to work for months. And where where's the, you know, my next um, job going to come from? So I taught her some energy tools, which is what we'll be doing on, on this workshop. And she sent me a text about six days later saying, um, I've just been offered three jobs. Um, my my agent has been on the phone for about the hundredth time saying, what are you doing that's changed? <laughs> so and she's just like, and it was a meditation that I'd been teaching her, um, playing around with, with all of this energy work. So it this is where things can happen. It's like she'd been getting clear about the vision that she wanted where she was um like signing contracts and um you know seeing herself in in the the lifestyle that she wanted to live in and sending that out and seeing no blocks seeing the way you know opening up for her seeing uh invitations come feeling uh casting sessions going really well all of these kind of experiences that it's about getting clear with who do you want to be what what do you what's that way that you want to be in your life and because you're when you're in a being state you're in your it's an energy it's a vibration that you're transmitting into the universe and that's what the universe responds to so i just had her doing that every day and she, just a meditation how long was that meditation 20 minutes maybe less so once a day that's all she did pretty much did you give, did she have any other other things she should be doing during the day well, it was just kind of like the general mindset tools that I've just been talking about on here, really. And mm -hmm. just um, because we'd, we'd had maybe four sessions, like I worked with her one to one. Uh, we have a call every week and we've done some clearing work um, on unrelated things, just things in her past. Um, but all of it raises your vibration. Any of the stuff that you have inside <coughs> you that stops you stepping into who you're here to be. Uh, it keeps your vibration lower. And as you deal with the, st the stuff that comes to you when you get triggered, because you're going for your dreams, you get triggered because the opposite always comes up because that's inside you, the the resistance and the I can't have it because. Mm -hmm. So when you get triggered, it comes up more and it's like speaking really loud and says, who do you think you are? You're no good. It won't happen for you. And it, yeah. you can either be scared off and go, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to go and find something else to do because obviously I'm not good enough. Or you can sit with the discomfort that it brings up and and allow it to lift up and out of you and be with the, um, not that you're wallowing in pain, it's just like you're taking this objective view of, the, of an experience that's going on inside you. And, it, and then, then it lifts out and it goes, it doesn't last. Um, and then your vibration is higher because of that junk has gone. Yeah. By bit, you know, if that's the vision of you in the future that you're aiming for and you're letting go of all of this stuff, bit by bit your vibration raises and then it just meets because it's a natural attraction. So that's when it feels effortless because you've done all the clearing work. I love that, Kathy, and I, mean, I wish I could, you know that I could ca carry on this interview, I think, for the rest of the day, and I keep asking you questions, And because, I mean, Kathy's one of those people that I've met, and I, she, you go to one of her workshops, or you go to one of her meetups, or whatever, and the amount of information and knowledge she has is unbelievable on anything um, around this stuff. Um, she's, the research levels are very high. <laughs> Um, so, you know, always feel free to connect with Kathy. If people want to, um, maybe they don't, they're not ready to go to, you, go to um, a spend a day with you, or maybe they can't do the 1st of July or the 23rd of, of September, but how could they connect with you anyway so that they can keep in touch and keep, uh, she has great blogs, Kathy, as well. And maybe you do, you do your Facebook Lives too on your page. How can they connect with you? Um, connect with me on Facebook. That's probably the best place. Um, I'm always on there, or uh, so just under my name, Kathy Ballard. Um, and you can go to my website, which is kathyballard.com. Um, or my my Facebook group is called The Art of Flow. 
can is just share first of all um, the website address. Um, it will not be clickable if you are watching this on the replay. Um, but I mean, if you're watching this somewhere else other than um, on uh, on Facebook. Um, and what's the other one? Did you say the art of flow on Facebook, right? Yeah, or just Kathy Ballard on Facebook. Um, well, um, the art of flow um, is your group. Yeah. Um, I haven't got the the link here. But um, I will. I'm just putting it up so you can you can just find it. So if they did Facebook and just searched Art of Flow, they yeah. would find that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, if you, if anybody wants to try um, that meditation that will help you get out down out of your mind into your heart and connect into that expansive energy that I was talking about, there's a, a free meditation on my website. I call so, it. The flow, I call it the flow process. Um, and so, and that is, if they just go to uh, kathyballard.com or do, is it, do they have to go to some link, um, Kathy? Yes, there's um, just an opt-in box there. And you can okay. download so the meditation. Opt-in there, for, and that's the meditation you were talking about that made the difference to that young woman? It's a similar one. Yeah, similar I mean, I just, one. I just channeled that for her. And because I, when I work with clients one-to-one, -one, I record it. So there's always very bespoke uh, meditations because I channel through whatever needs to come for them. But this is, um, I've got lots of past clients who, who still tell me that they're using this meditation, this free one, so every day. And it makes a big difference because as soon as you are out of your head and into that infinite part of you, uh, ideas just come to you. You find you're connecting with peace and joy and all you know your greater self so it's um it's really powerful to do it <laughs> okay. i love it i love it all and i hope that you will anybody who's on who stayed on thank you very much if you've got any questions it's last minute now to actually put them up but in the meantime connect with kathy or if you're interested in her workshop it is um at kathyballard.com forward slash double a um and i think i have it somewhere that i can share it just quickly again um, if you're interested in the workshop, it says uh, 1st of July at the moment, but there's also the 23rd of, of September that it's available to do. Um, yeah. Please connect with Kathy on Facebook if you haven't done so already. Um, send her um, you know, any questions you have. She's very um, helpful. Nothing's ever set in stone. Um, and yeah. uh, have a talk to her. Kathy, yeah. thank you so much for um, being online with us today, sharing your wisdom. If you didn't catch the beginning of this um, uh, interview with Kathy, then please do watch uh, the beginning. She had some really great um, stuff that she shared with us before we got, got on to asking lots of questions about her workshop, uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you. And thank you, Helen, for asking such great questions. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to connect with people. So, yeah, do please get in touch and um, let's, let's see what we can do. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.